So today I am going to discuss how I am protecting my family from a grid outage, whether that be short term for a few hours or more longer term, like two days, or God forbid, a couple of weeks or longer. And how the whole reason for me starting this channel was to show you all how I'm doing it in case you want to do the same. So I just watched the documentary film. Uh, it's about an hour long. It's called Grid Down, Power Up uh, with Dennis Quaid. I'll leave a link in the description, uh, this video, if you want to check out that, that video. It's free to watch on YouTube. I highly recommend it. It basically goes into how vulnerable our electric grid is here in the United States just to, I mean, natural disasters, terrorist attacks, cyber attacks, which seem more likely these days. Actually, a terror attack's already happened, which I completely forgot about. Um, people shot up some electric substations. Um, I think it was a few years ago. It also talks about an EMP and how we're, our grid is not protected from that at all. It's just eye-opening to see how unprepared we are for those type of events. I mean, how critical is electricity to our, our daily lives? And to see that a grid outage for a couple of weeks or longer would just be a disaster for our nation. And judging by the state of our politics here in the U.S. or these board, the people who sit on the boards of these utilities, these electric utilities, it doesn't look like anything's ever going to happen on it. So in 2021, I lived through that uh, snow apocalypse here in Texas that I guess it came within four minutes and 37 seconds. That's how close we were to it shutting the whole Texas electric grid down for weeks or even longer. So that to me right there was a wake up call that I should be doing something uh, to take my energy into my own hands. And that's exactly what I did installing my system. So it was at that point in 2021 that I started to research whether it was possible to be able to power your whole home uh, on solar and a battery bank for storage at night. And up to that point, I didn't really realize that these systems were strong enough to even do that. I mean, yeah, power a few lights and a few refrigerators. Sure, I did that. I had a little system set up, I mean, eight years ago that I really just played with a little bit here and there, but never really took it seriously. But as far as I was aware at that time, yeah, you could live off grid, but if you did, it had to be in like a little tiny house where you were you know, using a washboard to wash your clothes, a little tiny water heater, maybe all 12 volt appliances, living on very little power. And as appealing as that life might be to me, I'm in a different stage of life where I have a family, we use a lot of power, and I needed to be able to have all those modern conveniences like heating, air conditioning, hot water heater, a full size tank uh, for a family. Um, be able to power power tools, be able to pull water out of my well, for instance. So I was looking for a system that could power my lifestyle the way I'm used to having it. And after my research, it was clear to me that yes, there are systems out there that can do that. Now you might have to change your energy usage a little bit at night and try to conserve power more when there's no sun, depending on how big your battery bank is. And the battery bank is typically the most expensive part of the system, um, but it can be done. And it's really not that complicated. You need solar panels to basically harness the energy from the sun. You need some sort of solar panel racks, whether you build your own or get these metal ones or these plastic kind of uh, ballast style racks. You need an inverter, which is basically the brains of the operation. That is how the power gets converted from the DC electricity that the solar panels send and converts it to the AC power that we use inside our houses and you need a battery bank to be able to store that excess energy you make during the day to be used at night when there's no sun. And even on cloudy days, like a day like today that you see behind me, I'm still able to power my entire home. I'm still gonna get a full charge on my battery bank today because of how many solar panels I have. I have a 19,000 watt system. Um, but even if it's really heavy, heavily overcast, you just need to conserve power on those days or have a battery bank big enough to last a few days to get you through those those days when you have less production. And I don't live in a tiny home. I live in a 1900 square foot, four bedroom, two bath home that also has a well pump um, and a water pressure pump that I have to power with my solar system that feeds five different homes on this property you see here behind me. And my system can even start my four ton traditional air conditioner without using a soft start, which is basically used to uh, lower the surge 
on these air conditioners because that's the hardest thing to start is those big 125, 130 amp surges. I don't even need one of those soft starts to tone that down. My system can handle that. And as I mentioned, my goal on this channel is to help you all be able to do this. Now I have two different systems that I use. I've got a couple different houses on the property here that I have hooked up with systems. Mine is the Solark 15K inverter. And the other one is on the other home is a Bluetti EP800, which is kind of an all-in-one system, a little easier to install. That system though, the EP800 from Bluetti is a little smaller because that home that I have it installed on is, it has propane appliances. So that saves a lot of energy on those bigger, higher draw items like heating, for instance, like hot water, uh, the oven, that type of thing. Now I installed both those systems myself but if you're not comfortable enough to do that, you can get outside installers to do that for you. Now I wrote an ebook on everything I have learned from beginning this, this crazy process of producing my own energy, basically having my own mini little mini power plant on my property and how I am able to conserve power on the days where there's not a lot of sun. Also in that ebook, I go into the different appliances I use that are energy efficient, that helps me be able to use my water heater at night, uh, my washer and dryer at night, even when I don't have any sun. That doesn't end up draining my battery bank completely overnight. I talk about the permitting process, how much solar you can create, or how much solar power you can create in good and bad weather, and ways to start out smaller and scale up from there as long as you use the right equipment up front to get started. And there's a lot of other down-to-earth info you'll get in that book as well. If you're interested in checking out that book, go to solar-ebook.com. There's more info on it there and you can get it for less than 10 bucks. Now, in my opinion, we need our electrical grid to be as decentralized as possible. And right now, in my opinion, it's very centralized. Or if you have a couple substations go down, I mean, there's hundreds of thousands of people without electricity. So the more of us that can put these little mini power plants together like I have on my property, the more energy secure we all are. Now, is installing your own whole home solar system with battery backup expensive? Sure, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, my Solark 15K system that I have on my, on my home ran about $35,000. The Bluetti EP800 system that I have that is a little bit smaller was about $17,000. And I did the installation myself, so if you had to do get somebody else to do the installation, it cost a considerable amount more. But these systems are gonna pay for themselves over time. Sure, it might take six, eight, 10, 12 years, but you're gonna get your money back by having basically no electric bill or barely any electric bill at all. Like for instance, I still have an electric bill because I wanna maintain my grid connection, um, but they do charge me $23 a month just to have the meter in place. So my bill is always right around that, but that is still the cheapest backup power for me to have. And you do need some sort of backup system um, when you are on an off-grid solar, because at some point you're gonna have a heavily, a, or a large storm come in that is raining heavily for two, three, four days, and you're gonna go through your battery bank. So you'll need some sort of backup. For me, the grid is the cheapest, but if the grid was down, I also have a backup generator that I can hook right up to either of my systems and charge those batteries if needed. And your payback period on these systems completely depend on how much your electric rates are in your area. If you're where I am in Texas, the payback period is going to be longer because we're because our electric rates are around 10 to 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Now in California, it's closer to 25, 30 cents per kilowatt hour. So your payback period is going to be a lot faster in California than say in Texas. But for me, the biggest reason for me to have my system was to have power no matter what happens to the electric grid. And that to me is priceless. This video is meant to give you all just a 30,000 foot view of that it is possible to put in your own system to power all of your energy needs at your home without drastically affecting your lifestyle and exactly what it takes to do that. I want to also give a big shout out and thank you to those of you who have emailed me um, about how you used me as your inspiration to put in your own systems and now that you're and let me know that you are energy secure now. Thank you, that gives me the motivation to keep making these videos because it is a lot of work and time away from my family to do this. So thank you all, I really appreciate that. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel, click that little notification bell, like this video, and you'll start to see all my other videos start to pop up in your suggested videos so you can learn more about this. And let's get this done together. All right, everyone, thanks. We'll see you in the next video.